So I need to ask you, before we really get started, have you ever broken a promise? Have you ever broken a promise? Will you take out the trash? I will act commercial, I promise. Please clean your room. I will after the next round of Fortnite, I promise. It's 10 p.m. and the family is getting ready for bed, and the trash is still in the kitchen, and the room isn't clean. I promise. These are words that easily flow with little thought to the consequences. So, let me ask you this. Are promises good or bad? Little, little Sally uh, takes ballet. Every practice and recital, she asks her father if we'll be there. And every time, he promises that he will. But something always comes up. This happens week after week, which turns to months, which turns to years. One evening, the father asks, does little Sally do ballet? The mother, with a tear in her eye, says, yes, she does. She just stopped asking you to come. A young father working 50-plus hours a week has sons playing in sports and other activities. They never ask him to show up because they know he'll either be coaching or cheering him on on the sidelines. He makes adjustments to his schedule, and he does whatever it takes to show up. His sons will never have to ask, because he made a promise not to be like his father. A young couple meets at the end of the aisle in the local church, and they promise to give each other give themselves to each other, making a promise that they will be there no matter what. Through rich, through poor, sickness and health. But with life struggles and kids and everything that goes into a marriage, at one point or another, they both feel like it's time to give up. It's time to throw in the towel. Time to call it quits. Through 50 years of marriage, though, they learned how to work through their problems, how to keep moving forward with the promise they made with each other. Promises. Are they good? Or are they bad? What side of those words are you on? Are you carelessly saying them, not realizing the effects? Or are you on the receiving end, being crushed every time you hear them? Have you ever broken a promise? I have. Did I mean to? No. But we make promises and things happen. Man's promises to each other is like this piece of paper. It's easily broken. As much as we try to keep a promise, as much as we try not to break promises, things happen in lives, and time and time again, we just keep breaking promises. So promises, are they good or are they bad? It's a time of darkness for the Israelites. Israel is being attacked from all sides. Assyria has invaded. The Jewish people have been taken captive. They're in bondage. This is a dark time for the Jewish people. And, and although it seems hopeless, God made a promise. Isaiah 9, 6 says, A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God, 
He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. A child will be born to us, meaning a young child, an infant, will come. And not just any infant, a son will be given to us. The Son of God is that infant. For it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. So a Son will be given to us, and He will rule over us. And it doesn't say that He will rule over us with a a tyrant, or with fear, or with anger. You see, this Son will rule over us for eternity. And an everlasting kingdom. And He will be called Wonderful advisor, and mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. You see, in Isaiah, through a time of darkness, God promised the people that there will be a child. So during this time of of suffering, a lot of the Jewish people were giving up hope. Some weren't. And one person in particular, after 700 years, you see, God made this promise to the Israelites, to the Jewish people, and then it took almost 700 years for it to finally come true. But after 700 years, one person in particular, his name was Simeon. And in Luke 2, here's what it says. In Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was a good and godly man. He was waiting for God's promise to Israel to come true. Simeon had not given up. He was still banking on God's promise. The Holy Spirit was with him. The Spirit had told Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. The Spirit led him into the temple courtyard. When Jesus' parents brought the child in, they came to do what do for him what the law required. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is the light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. Simeon was promised that he would see the Messiah before he died. A promise that was made 700 years before. And God kept that promise. In this book, there are over 3,000 promises made from God to man. Over 3,000. And unlike man's promises that can be easily torn, God's promises cannot. 3,000 over that. And it's hard, to, it's hard to phantom that. It's hard to picture that. But let's look at it this way. I have a ream of paper, and there's only 500 sheets here. Can anybody come up and tear this? You see, God's promises is like this. It's unbreakable. It's unterrible. And this is only 500 sheets. We're talking about over 3,000 promises made by God. So promises, are they good or are they bad? You see, God's promises didn't end with Jesus. 
It didn't end with his birth. As a matter of fact, through Jesus, God made seven promises that he will always keep. The first one is, I will be with you. May the Lord, who gives you peace, give you peace at all times. And in every way, may the Lord be with you. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 You see, it says, I will be with you. The one who can bring peace to your life, the one that can watch over you, and the one that will be with you, will be with you always. It's a promise. It's a promise that we can stand on. It's a promise that we can hold on to. God will never leave you. And the second one, I will protect you. My Father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. No one can steal them out of my Father's hands. John 10, 29. You see, it says that He will protect you. And it's not just protection here, but it's eternal protection. It's an everlasting protection. You see, through Jesus, we are offered eternal protection. I will give you strength. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. Philippians 4, 13. No matter what challenges we face, no matter what's going on in life, He promised to help us get through it. He promised to give us the strength to get to the other side. We will face the challenges through life. But God promises not to make you face them alone. He will be there with you during those times. I will answer you. And I will do anything you ask in my name. Then the Father will receive glory from the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. John 14, 13 and 14. As long as we ask in the Father's name, and what we ask goes along with his will. Now, I don't want anybody going out and saying, Mr. Allen said, I want a new car. God's going to give it to me. That's not what it's saying, but what it's saying is he will give you what you need as long as it's in his name and in his will. I will provide for you. My God will meet all my needs. He will meet them in keeping with his wonderful riches. These riches come to you because you belong to Christ Jesus. <laughs> I will provide for you. God is, will take care of us. He will take care of you as long as you belong to Jesus. As long as you're one of his forever friends, and as long as you are following him, he will always provide for you. He will always be there for you. And he will always take care of you. I will give you peace. I leave my peace with you. I give my peace to you. I do not give it to you as the world does. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. You see, the world looks at, looks at peace differently than what God does. The world looks at peace as you know, maybe the more money I make, I'll have, I'll have more peace. Maybe if I get that next promotion, there'll be peace in my life. Maybe if. But the thing is, with what the world's peace does, it does never give you eternal peace. 
God's peace is eternal peace. The peace that only He can bring to your heart because you know Him. And the last one, and I think it's the greatest, I will always love you. Here is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world. He sent Him so we could receive life through Him. Here is what love is. It is not that we loved God. It is that He loved us and sent His Son to give us life and to pay for our sins. 1 John 4, 9 and 10. I will always love you. That is one of the most amazing promises that God can give us. That he will always love us. No matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter what turns we take in life that leads us down the wrong path, no matter what I do, God will always love me. And that is a promise that I can depend on. 2020 was quite the year. And with everything that went on, if you can look back, and if you can look back at the promises that God has kept to you, because no matter how bad 2020 was, God was always there. I could always depend on Him. I could always trust Him. Because I knew He was there loving me through it all. You see, God's promises aren't like paper. You do not tear easily. But they are strong. And they are firm. And for 2021, that is what we need to hold on to. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's coming. But if we go into it with the understanding that God's promises will never fail us, I think we could do just about anything. With God on our side and His promises to hold on to, He will take care of us. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you, Lord, for your promises. Your promises to be with us, protect us, to give us strength. Your promise to give us answers, to provide for us, to give us peace. And the most amazing one of all, your promise to always love us. Lord, I pray as we get ready to start a new year that you will guide our steps, you will walk with us. And no matter what happens, we will depend on these seven promises that through Christ you have given us. And thank you, Lord, for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.